now we've seen how uh, we can access a, a single a column of a data frame, but uh, you know very often you don't only want to access column, you actually want to access a combination of rows and uh, columns. So uh, yeah, so you can basically take a subset of your uh, data frame, uh, for instance, to I know either filter it on some condition or uh, simply uh, select a number of rows and column. So in if you're familiar with R, then you will you know that you can uh, simply you know pass uh, rows and columns in the square brackets. With uh, Python and, and Pandas, uh, you cannot directly do this. We have to use what we call here an uh, indexer. So these indexers, there are uh, there are two of them. We'll mostly work with uh, the first one, uh, which is dot uh, lock, and then you uh, it's not really a a function so you don't put uh, regular brackets after it you put these square brackets okay so this is a, a syntax that is uh, specific to pandas okay so the way it works is i simply do the name of my data frame then dot lock and then i give the rows i want to select so the actually i have to give the index values of the rows i want to select so the row names if you want and then the names of the columns I want to select. So here what I'm doing is I'm selecting the row with index two and the column name. So let's try to load it. And that's uh, actually what I could do before. I could uh, yes, uh, let's just look at it. Uh, and so we, we should in principle select the third row of the table because remember that the, the third row has index two. Okay, so first, the index here, it's a default index and it's starting with zero. So you see, I take row with index two and the column name. So indeed, it's uh, this, uh, uh, the name of uh, Miss uh, Lavosh here in the data frame. Okay, so here I'm accessing a single value of the, of the data frame by specify, specifying the index and the column name that I want to access. And again, don't forget to put the dot lock because if you try to do it directly like this, uh, as you could do in R for instance, then this uh, will not work. Okay, so you really have to put a dot lock for accessing a specific row and column. Uh, now, if I want to, not only select a single uh, row or single column, I often want to select multiple of them, then I can <clears throat> simply pass uh, a, a sequence of uh, values as either rows or uh, column names. Okay, and there are a couple of ways that I can do this. So I can either explicitly pass uh, a list of uh, index values and column names, like that. Or if I want to select the whole uh, range of uh, values, so in this case, let's say all the uh, values between index 0 and 10, I can use this uh, slicing uh, notation uh, where I put a column. Okay, so if I, it's uh, the start index, a column, and the ending index, and the same with column names. I can take everything from name, name from the column name, sorry, until the column age. So that would select the first three columns in the uh, data frame. If I want to select everything uh, from a certain value to the end, I can put the value column and nothing after. And if I start with a column and then a value, I will take everything from the start up to that value. So let's see uh, a couple of an example here. So here I want to select uh, the first three rows and the first uh, three columns. Okay, so I gave a slice here from uh, zero to two. So index zero, one, two. And uh, on the second line, basically, this uh, achieves the same uh, result 
but because I start from zero, it's the same as starting from the beginning. So I could just put uh, a column and two. And actually there would be one more way to do this uh, because the, the columns are, um, I ah, know actually I'm not selecting the first, sorry, that's what I was saying, the first three columns, so it's not the case. If I, if I was selecting the, let's say the first three columns, then I could simply say uh, name and then uh, column H. Okay, so that would select uh, a slice of columns, so from name until H. Now, one thing that is really important to, to notice here uh, is that when you do the slicing, uh, actually the end value is also included in the slice. Okay, so if I say from zero to two or up to two, then the index uh, with value two, so the third row in this case, is also included in the selection. And the same for the, for the columns. Okay, the age, column here is also included. And, uh, you know, if you are familiar with uh, Python, you will know that this is not uh, standard in Python when doing slicing because the uh, default behavior of uh, slicing is in Python is that the uh, end index is always included. Okay, so with this lock indexer, this is uh, something a bit uh, unusual, uh, at least for, you know, people working in, in Python is that the end position of a slice is included. And actually, if I'm using the other indexer, the iLock indexer, then this is not the case. This end position is not included. So really, with a lock, just you have to always remember this, that the end slice is uh, included. Uh, here, we have another example to just show that the you can actually use the, this also this select uh, technique of uh, you know subsetting a data frame with uh, the lock indexer, for instance, to reorder a column. Okay, so you can, I mean, it's possible you can pass several times the name of a column, then the column will be uh, selected several times. So I can duplicate the H column if I want in this way, and I can also reorder the columns as I see fit. So for instance, here I put age and passenger class in front of the name uh, column. And I could do actually the same thing also for the for rows. I could also uh, uh, reorder rows with this same uh, technique. Uh, here, another example where I'm selecting the last uh, five rows. So from 8, 8, uh, 886 to the end. And I select all the columns from the beginning until the column H. And yeah, this was just to show that if you, when we select a, a single uh, column of a data frame, then as I mentioned uh, earlier, this returns a so-called uh, Panda series object. Okay, so uh, a series object, as I said, is simply, uh, if you want, a uh, a one uh, a vector of uh, values uh, so so a difference with a let's say a regular uh, vector in uh, i don't know numpy or a, a list in python is that this is actually a named vector so each uh, each value in the series has also the a name and by default you see that the the uh, the values are set to the uh, name of the so if I take a single row in this case the uh, values are set to the uh, column names. Now here I have a section just to show you a couple of you know common uh, problems you will uh, might encounter when you use uh, uh, lock. Okay, so actually uh, in the um, uh, in all the examples that I showed uh, so far, uh, what happened is that the uh, index values, there's a default index value, so there are numerical, numerical values uh, starting from zero, okay? And so this can sometimes, uh, you know, create a small 
confusion in the sense that uh, if I now, let's say, have a data frame where the index is uh, is not are not uh, the default numbers, but uh, I have actually um, some uh, you know other uh, index uh, values. So here in this case are the passenger names. Now let's try to run again the uh, a selection like we did before. So I want to select the first, uh, sorry, the uh, rows, the second, third, fourth, and fifth rows. Okay, so one, two, uh, four. Okay, so before this worked, but you see that if I try now, it's not working. Okay, any, does anyone has an idea why, why it's, it used to work and now it doesn't work? So the reason is uh, because with uh, the lock index, remember that we are working, we have to, we are selecting on index values, not on positions. Okay, so here actually the, before it happens that the index values uh, exactly match the position of the rows because that's the default behavior in pandas. But now when I loaded this data from here, it's no longer the case. Now the index values are, are something completely different from row position, right? So index values, they are actually uh, the names of the passengers. So <clears throat> now when I write this, uh, pandas is trying to find a row that is has an index value uh, equal to one, but there is no such value in the index. Okay, so that's why I get uh, this error. So instead, what I would have to do in this case is that I would have to actually give uh, the proper the proper value for the index, which is the name of the passenger. So if I want to select these uh, four columns. I have to say, okay, it's from uh, Mr. Petru here until uh, Mr. Uh, Dooley. Okay, so if I do this, now it's it's uh, selection is working properly and I select it. So, um, so correct, uh, that means the rules uh, selection is uh, working. Okay, so always remember that if you don't have numerical values as index, you have to be careful when you use the uh, lock uh, index. Okay, so <clears throat> of course it would be possible to, for instance, as I show here, to query the index for the positions that I want. Uh, but actually, uh, if I, in this case, if I really want to query by position and that's a, a position, the index does not match the position, and it's easier to use the second type of indexer that uh, we we have not uh, not seen. But basically, this iLock indexer works uh, more or less exactly the same as the lock indexer, except that it only accepts positions instead of index or column names. Okay, so if you want, uh, if you really want need to index on positions, then you can use iLock instead of uh, of lock. Uh, all right, just short, uh, small uh, quiz here. Uh, let's say now I have the same uh, data frame that I'm uh, that I have before. I'm uh, loading it, so let's let's try this here. So the sorry, now we just load it here, and we show it again. All right, so now I want to, let's say I, I want to select the last five rows. And, you know, since I I, I don't know exactly the, uh, how many, let's say I don't know how many rows there are. So I, I would like to use this, you know, this shortcut where I say everything from minus five position till the end. Okay, but if I try this, Uh, actually, it doesn't work. You see that I'm, it returns me the entire uh, data set. But my, you know, my index here, there are actual numbers, right? So, so can you tell me what is, uh, I mean, 
to have an idea why what the problem is here or why why does this not not work So the problem here, again, you can click here if you want to see the answer, uh, is that uh, lock is, uh, you know, is selecting really on index values, but it doesn't, uh, it considers these values if you want. So index is a, a string. It, it doesn't consider it as an actual uh, number, even if, if, it, if it is a, a, a number of numeric values that is, that is used. So when I try to access uh, uh, do this uh, slicing here with minus five. What uh, pandas or so the lock index is doing is that it's trying to look for a row that is whose index is minus five. Okay, and there is no such index in the. I have no row that is indexed minus five in my data frame, and so uh, that is the reason it uh, it doesn't work. Okay, if I was using the i lock indexer which works on positions then this would return the expected uh, value but with a lock indexer that uh, doesn't work and all right so this uh, brings us to the i lock indexer so in this course we choose not to discuss it too much because in general uh, uh, the lock indexer is is a lot more useful but basically it's exactly the same as the lock indexer except that you pass positions instead of passing row and uh, column names. All right, so time for a micro exercise where you will uh, try to do a, a selection with the lock index. So as usual, I give you, uh, you know, five minutes or so to try to work through uh, together. So, all right, so I want to select first. Let's uh, just focus on selecting the <clears throat> correct uh, rows. Uh, so with the uh, uh, lock indexer, I can. Uh, we've just seen that we can select uh, rows and uh, columns. So um, of course, you know, I could say I want all the. Um, Odd rows, so that'd be one, two, uh, sorry, one, three, five, uh, seven, and uh, and so on. Okay, so here I'm selecting them. Uh, of course, you know, there are 891 rows, so I'm not going to type all this uh, selection by hand. Uh, that would be uh, a crazy thing to do. So instead, I, I need to think of a way that I can. Uh, you know, uh, auto generates this uh, sequence of uh, values. And uh, one way you can do this is, uh, I forgot if I put it in the, yeah, I put it in the hint, is with a range function that, uh, you know, you can give a, um, a start value and uh, end value and also a an, uh, step uh, of uh, increase. So let's say, uh, I want to start from uh, zero, and then I want to go uh, until the uh, last uh, position in the in the data frame. In this case, it corresponds to the number of uh, rows. So if you remember, we've seen the shape attribute that returns the number of rows and columns as a tuple. So if I want to get the number of rows, uh, I would um, I get the first element of the tuple, which is uh, at position zero. Okay. And so let's just convert this to a list. And yeah, I will just uh, subset it so we don't show the whole list. Those 20 numbers. Uh, all right. So now I have uh, my uh, list of numbers here. Since I want to take only the um, Odd, uh, odd rows, actually, I will start from one and I will put a step of two to, uh, you know, only keep every second uh, values. Okay, so now I have my uh, 
the proper list of rows I want to uh, take. So I can copy this and replace it here. And now you see I get uh, the odd rows. Okay, one, three, five, seven, nine, and uh, and so on. Actually, here I don't even need to convert it to a list. I think I can pass directly a range object exactly. So that's uh, fine. Let's just uh, do a head on this to make it more compact. And so that was for the first part. And now the second part is I simply, I want to select the columns name, age, and uh, fair. And then I want to reorder so that age is first and name is uh, second. So let me just copy this and so we can pass a list of uh, column names here like that and as we've seen we can pass them in in any order we wish so in this case we wanted age first so we'll simply take uh, age from here and place it there okay so now I have all the odd rows and I, um, I've kept only the three columns I wanted and I reordered them in the order I wanted. All right, any, do you have any questions for, for this microgrid size or more generally for selecting uh, columns with this, uh, selecting uh, rows and columns with this lock indexer? Okay, it's not the case, and we can move on. And so the, now the next thing we want to to see is often actually when you know when you do a a selection <clears throat> of uh, typically of rows, uh, you often want to select on a given condition. So for instance, I know in the example of the Titanic data frame, maybe I want to select only uh, women in my uh, data set to carry out some specific analysis like, or maybe I want to select only uh, uh, kids or people you know under 18 or people above uh, 60 years old or you know this type of um, selection on, I want to do. so basically uh, take a subset of my data frame based on a given condition so this option is also referred to as uh, filtering the data set so this is possible with uh, uh, lock uh, indexer. And the way it works is that uh, you simply pass a condition as a row selection in the to the lock indexer. So here we have an example here. I So it's always the same uh, data set. Now I want to select all the passengers that uh, have an age that is greater than 50. So you see what I do is in the row selection, I simply pass uh, df.h. So the h column is greater than 50. And now uh, you see that I uh, have selected all the rows where h is above 50. Now, one important thing to remember here is, is that uh, this type of conditional selection only works with the lock index so you cannot do this with iloc okay if you try to pass uh, this type of conditional selection as as row selection to iloc it will not uh, work and this is is one of the big advantages of lock compared to to iloc and is also why we, it's uh, generally generally the the more more useful index of of both and why we focus on on this one in the in the course because it's able to do this conditional selections and uh, there are uh, some things that is very useful to to do when you are analyzing uh, data um, so actually uh, what what happens uh, behind the scene here is that when I pass this type of condition what I'm really doing is that I'm creating uh, a vector of uh, boolean true or false values so a series actually of a panda series of 
uh, Boolean value. So just to make a demo of this, uh, I will uh, show here, I create a mask uh, variable uh, that will, uh, uh, that I create by uh, applying a, a Boolean operator to the uh, sex column in this case. So I want to check if the uh, gender of the passengers is male or female. If it's male, then the value will be true. And if it's uh, not male, then the value will be false. And now that I created this mass uh, variable, so it's simply a, a series of true and false values, I can uh, apply it to the um, To, I can use it inside of the lock index. So you see that here I now selected all the uh, male passengers and I also selected three specific uh, columns. But the point I wanted to make here is that um, basically the, here you can pass any uh, sort of uh, sequence of true false uh, values to select uh, uh, the columns. So when you do a, a kind of complicated selection, often uh, you can create an intermediate variable to uh, where you store this vector of true and false values. And if it's a very simple selection, uh, like we've seen in the beginning, for instance, age greater than 50, then you can uh, directly uh, put the, the value here. It will be, you know, uh, on the fly uh, converted to an uh, to an array of true false, and then uh, the selection will, will be made. Now, uh, another thing that we can, uh, I mean, we've seen how we can do a selection on a single condition, but often you also want to have more than one condition. You want to combine multiple conditions together. And this you can easily do with uh, and and or uh, logical uh, operators. So the so way that you use them in uh, when you work with uh, pandas data frame is that you have to use uh, ampersand and uh, a vertical bar for and and or. Because if you're uh, if you're familiar with, uh, uh, I mean, as you should know, you should be uh, familiar with the basics of, of Python at this point, is that in general, the, the Boolean operators in Python, they are written like this, right? Like true and false, for instance, uh, we return false, and the or operator is or, okay? But when you use the uh, pandas uh, data frames, you cannot use and and or, you have to use the uh, ampersand and vertical bar to, to do and and or operation. The other important thing is that each condition has to be surrounded in brackets, okay? So here I want to select passengers that are, uh, so the women's and uh, those among them who had more than 200, uh, I don't know, it was dollars or pounds for their uh, ticket on the on the ship. Okay, so if I do this, here I do it in two steps. I first create uh, a variable that I call mask that will contain a, a vector of true false values. And then I pass this mask to the uh, lock indexer. But I could have also, I could very much have done it in a single line. I could have done it like, uh, like that and I would get the, the same result. Okay, uh, so now I see I should have only uh, women, which is, uh, seems to be the case, and all of, uh, all of them should have had more than 200, let's say, pounds for their, for their journey. Um, okay, so this is how I can uh, combine conditions. And uh, here, another example where I use the or operator. So now I want uh, everyone who is under 25 or who is a uh, woman. So now the only uh, male passengers I should see are, are those that are uh, younger than 25. 
All right, so time uh, for you to try this uh, type of uh, conditional selection with a new micro exercise. Uh, again, uh, are there, if there are any questions, please let us know. And otherwise, I yeah, okay, uh, give you uh, again five to 10 minutes to, to work on this and then we will correct it. All right, so yeah, I think we can go ahead with uh, <clears throat> with the corrections. Uh, so let's, um, so we, we want to uh, select, first we want to select uh, the passengers that are either in first class, uh, no, that are in first class and that are less than 18 years old. So basically the children who are in uh, in first class. So I will I will do this in, in two steps. So I will create the mask uh, with my selection, and then I will uh, apply the mask to the uh, data frame. So, <clears throat> all right, so I will have uh, two conditions and uh, with an, um, they both have to be true, okay? So I use the uh, end uh, Boolean operator here. And my first condition is that uh, the um, uh, passengers class, so P class, must be equal to one, okay? And, yeah. and then my second condition is that the age of the passenger is younger, smaller than 80, okay? So if I have this, I expect that I get exactly a, a vector of, uh, true and false um, values. Uh, so yeah, so here two things to remember is use uh, ampersand as end operator. If I try this, okay, it doesn't work. Uh, even though this is a, you know, it's a valid Python uh, keyword, uh, but it doesn't work. So I have to use ampersand and also uh, do not forget the brackets, okay, if I do, uh, something like this, it happens to work, but I think remove both, yeah, then it, so the, the parentheses around each condition um, are necessary. Okay. Uh, all right, so now I have the, the mask of, uh, of values. I can uh, now, applied to my uh, data frame. So if I do uh, ef.log, I can now pass the mask. <clears throat> and actually I wanted to select only uh, two columns. And those were the name and fair. Okay, so name and fair. Oops, I think kept. Okay, so I have now selected uh, in principle uh, passengers that are on, in the first class and younger than 18. Uh, actually, if I wanted to really check this, it would be useful to add also the uh, age and passenger class. Uh, <clears throat> all right, indeed, they're all in first class and the age is all below. 80. So that's uh, perfect. I made the selection I wanted. Now, uh, let's say I want to uh, compute the a fraction of uh, these passengers that uh, survived. So in the in the data uh, set, I have actually, uh, there's a column called survived that contains the value of uh, one and uh, zeros that will indicate if the passenger survived or <clears throat> or not. So at this point with what we know from uh, uh, about uh, pandas and, and uh, data frames, the way that we could uh, do this is a little bit cumbersome, but it's possible. So we would say, we would do something like maybe I would say I would create uh, a new mask that I call uh, survived. And here I would add the uh, the condition that 
the df dot survived equals one. Okay, so with this uh, second mask, I'm only uh, selecting the uh, survivors. And then what I could do is I could say, uh, okay, I will now select uh, here people who survived. I divide by uh, all uh, my entire uh, selection. And because uh, you know, I, I mean, this will return a data frame, right? I can. Uh, I don't want to divide divide one data frame by another. I want a number of rows. So here I can use the uh, shape uh, property, and I can say, okay, I will take the number of rows of the first one and of the second one, like that. And in principle, uh, so this should uh, give us 91% uh, survived. And indeed, if I actually looked, if we actually added here the survived um, column, we should see that almost everyone except one person uh, survives. So the 91 value uh, looks about uh, right. Uh, of course, uh, there is a much easier way to, to do this. I would be to say that uh, I will take the, um, we will see this a little bit later, uh, but basically we can apply on, on data frames and columns, we can apply a lot of uh, standard sort of uh, functions. And so here we could simply say, okay, let's take the, uh, so, oops, survived a column. And, that, and now, because it's a column with just zero and ones, I can uh, compute the uh, mean on it, okay? And I get the same value. So I basically take my data frame, I apply the mask to select only uh, children uh, in first class. Then I will uh, also take only the column survived. And then I apply, uh, I want to get the mean a value of this uh, column with the uh, mean method here. Uh, again, we will see this uh, a bit uh, later, but that would have been the, I mean, at this point of knowledge, we can uh, come up with a solution like I showed here, uh, or maybe actually we could do the sum of these two vectors that would be also, also work. Uh, but later we, we will see this uh, easier solution. All right, do you have any questions? Okay, if it's not the case, then um, let's uh, continue. And yeah, we have about 10 minutes left before the break. So we, here there's a small, uh, we put it in supplementary material, but I will just maybe briefly explain it. Sometimes it can be, Useful way. It's it's a concept of you know uh, whether uh, we have when we do a, a subsetting of a data frame, uh, what can actually happen is that uh, sometimes the um, value that is returned by pandas will be a uh, uh, okay. So sorry, I just answer the question. Does the masking also work with PD dot iLock? No. So with uh, iLock, it's not uh, possible to to do a uh, conditional selection. So masking will will not work. So with iLock, you really have to, to give a, a list of uh, a sequence of, of positions that you want to select. You cannot pass a, a vector of true false values. Uh, so yeah, so as I was saying, uh, uh, sometimes it can be important to, <clears throat> uh, I can make a, a you know, Let's say when we create a subset of a data frame, sometimes uh, pandas will return uh, what we call a view of the data frame. So it's kind of a, a pointer to the original data frame, or sometimes it will actually make a, a copy of it. So here we have a couple of uh, uh, examples. So let's say I have my uh, data frame 
and I'm changing now the age uh, of um, all the men or male passengers to uh, 999. Uh, uh, but now let's say I uh, create a subset. Okay, so I, I subset to select males and I store them in a new uh, variable here. And now I try to set the values on the age column to 888. And you see, I get this uh, warning from uh, Pandas. Okay, so basically what it's telling me is that uh, actually the this uh, value here, it does not contain an actual copy. So when it created the subset, it, only does, it didn't create a copy, it created what we call a view. So here we have an illustration to, to show this. So basically the idea of a view is that it's a pointer to the original data. So the, the original data here is a, a orange or yellow orange box, DF1. And DF2, you see it's a subset, but uh, basically it's still pointing to the original uh, data. Whereas in some cases, uh, uh, what Panda will, will do or what we want to do is, is to actually uh, create an, an actual uh, copy that the subset is an actual uh, copy. So in depth, it becomes, if you want, independent uh, data. So the so importance here is it means that if I change something in the subset, then it will not change the value in the uh, original data frame, if you want. Whereas, with a, a view, if if uh, you change the uh, values, then it will be changed both in the view and the original uh, data frame. So, if you're trying to change change a value in the views, then pandas will basically one will say, okay, I know I, uh, um, I mean, I don't want to, to do this because you know this would also affect the original uh, data frame. And in this case, what you have to do is that you explicitly need to make uh, a copy. So here you see that what I'm doing is that I um, I do the same selection, but at the end I add the copy method. Okay, so this means uh, uh, please you know uh, create a copy of the of this. Okay, and I assign it to this uh, value here, and now this. Um, this object, this variable, is pointing to a really a copy of the of the data frame. So it's a, a completely different object in in memory, if you want. And now, if I change the the values, now I can change the values in my um, subset. So in my because it's it's a own copy of the data frame, and it will not affect the values I have in the original uh, data frame. So what is sometimes a bit tricky is that it's not always very clear when pandas returns a view or a copy. So the rule here is that uh, if you if you uh, create a, a subset and you really intend it to be a copy, it's best to always explicitly uh, apply the copy method so you're sure that pandas is giving you a copy and not a a view of the of the data. Okay, so whenever you uh, make a subset and you intend to modify it in some way, uh, you should uh, create a a copy of it. Of course, if you just want to make a subset but you don't intend to modify anything, then you should not make a copy because, uh, as you can see here, when you can when you create a copy, this has a you know a cost in terms of uh, uh, memory. So. Uh, now I'm, I'm using more, I mean, okay, it's a very small data frame here, so it doesn't matter, but let's imagine it was much bigger. Uh, all this data has to be stored, you know, in memory in your computer, and, you know, memory is a precious uh, resource, so you don't want to waste it by making uh, copies all the time. So only make, I mean, when needed, make, make a copy, but make it only when you uh, really need it.